Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be trying to make a Dyson Sphere in Blender. Let's get started. Please like this video if you really enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and you can now join as well. So check that out. We've got some great, great features there. If you join the channel, check out the Patreon as well. That's some great stuff over there and the Blender Market as always. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. All right, so Dyson Spheres, what are they? They're like this giant, you know, contraption that's basically built around a sun. It's a theoretical engineering idea where, you know, you could harness the power of a sun and tap it and soak it up and use it for things like, you know, powering McDonald's and uh, burger joints and you know, the, the essential things. So I think what we'll do is we'll just we'll just start off. We're going to create a sphere and I'm going to add a particle system to it. I think I'll emit across that full time period. I'll give myself like 10,000 particles and I'll give them a lifetime of, we'll start with, uh, I'll go hundreds, they're around a little bit longer. So we just have a normal particle system, nothing nothing special yet. Now let's go in and start playing with things. So I wanna take, I'm curious what Boyd's would do for us. So Boyd's is a really interesting, it's like an algorithm basically, that can calculate movement of groups of objects. It's kind of like, it's, it's like herd mentality, right? So you can use Boyd's to simulate a group of fish, right, swimming, through the ocean, you know, they all kind of stay together. There's a bit of like noise in their movement, but they've kind of this general body movement. Automatically, this is what we start getting, right? Let's, now let's start, let's start, you know, mixing this up. I'm gonna add the force field. I'm gonna add a, a turbulence force, okay? Now turbulence forces are great for introducing some really fun movement. So I'll show you that. So we just, we've just added a turbulence force. We'll see if we can see any difference. Can't really see it much with this one. So I'm gonna turn the strength of this up to like 10 possibly. Go back. All right, so now you can see they're starting to like snake around. And what you gotta remember with like a turbulence force, it's basically like, it's like a noise pattern. Like we were creating material, right? Like a, you know, Veroni or something. But it's in 3D space and it affects where the particles go. So they're following the contours. If you can visualize that like Verona in 3D space and visualize these particles moving across the surface of it. So like if the size of this turbulence is really big, then um, I think it's, uh, I forget which way it goes. If it's like, that means like it's really dense. And so you'll get more and more noise. So like if we crank this up 10, yeah, I should probably go like way up to get it to be noticeable. There we go. So now you can see what we're getting is like a much larger, it looks like a flat surface, right? So that noise pattern has been scaled up in 3D space, which is just beautiful. Like I could just watch that all day. I could take it back to, I'll take it back to zero. Um, now flow is an interesting one. I don't know if I could really explain flow well enough. Emitting, like it's sort of the speed, of oh, the speed of the flow, I guess is, yeah, the way you can see, you can really kind of tell there. Um, so anyways, all this to say, something like this is gonna give us what we want. Uh, let's see, I'll turn my strength up to like 50. I might take my sphere and scale it up. And actually, I wanna also experiment first with taking it off Boyd's and just go back to Newtonian. Um, and I'm gonna take my field weights, turn my gravity off. I'm gonna compare that. Now let's come over to here. We're gonna take our, the strength of our turbulence, um, maybe the size. Let's try Vortex and I'll turn the strength of it up. You can see what they what it does. It's gonna cause everything to kind of, because the vortex is like a thin line sort of, sorry. <laughs> I just looked over there, because the camera is usually there. Like I said, I moved it today. I just looked into <laughs> empty space. We could change the shape to a point. All right, there we go. That's gonna give us some nice circular motion. What we could do is we could uh, use our little cube here as our particle. So I'll come back over. Renders object and go cube. I'm gonna go ahead and bake this as well. So cache and bake, just so it runs a bit smoother. And then what we can do is if I take the cube, I can give the cube a really glowy texture, very emissive. Let's grab an emission node. We're gonna stick this into the surface. Just delete that and I'm gonna turn the strength right up and I'm gonna go ahead and turn bloom on. Just go nuts with it. All right, this is already looking really interesting. 
Next thing we could try doing is, uh, cause we kinda wanna fill it out a bit. We could try adding children. Sometimes this can just like ruin everything and like, you know, kill your project. So I'm just gonna save. Let's see, if I go simple, they're gonna be kinda clumped up like this, right? And always bear in mind too, the display amount and the render amount, those are two separate values. So when you hit render, it's gonna go for a hundred particles as opposed to 10. So if you want these to look exactly the same, you wanna match them up. Like we can expand it out, right? But this radius, I mean, that's cool. That certainly gives us something that feels like, you know, but you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like, like these children particles aren't moving around. They're like caught onto the main particle. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So by using clump, what, what it's doing is when the particles em emits, the, ch the children are far away from it. But you can see up here at the top that they're kind of converging in. So you end up with these like kind of bits that are kind of collapsing into each other. Oh, okay, well we could try clump noise. What does that do? Does that break it up a little bit? Yeah, clump noise does help a little bit. And I want to introduce a bit of rotation now into these cubes. So I'm going to come over here to rotation. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, that's right. Delete bake. <laughs> rotation. And I'm going to just turn the randomize all the way up. So I'm going to take my sphere and I'm going to take the material. And I'm going to create a principled BSDF, a, a noise shader. Because with noise, you get this nice distortion value. I'm going to create a texture coordinate, pop the generated into the vector. I'm going to grab a color ramp like so. Grab all these over. Um, let's take this and we're going to stick this into the emission. So I'll just increase the values up a little bit so that we've, we can see it. So now with distortion, we can turn this, right? Or not turn it, but turn it up. And it's going to make it twistier and twistier. And that's going to give us an effect that looks very much like a sun. Uh, all right, so we're going to take this. We're going to do a mix RGB. We're going to throw this down here. And again, so if you haven't seen this in some of the streams, the texture coordinate is telling where, telling Blender where to place the, the texture onto the object. Affect those numbers to kind of break them up a little bit more. We can introduce a bit of noise into those numbers with something like a mix node. Even though we're talking about colors, colors are just a set of numbers too. So don't get tricked into thinking colors is actually a color. Think of, always think of a color as a set of numbers. Because now you can see that um, it actually distorts it further and in kind of a different way. So if I turn it off, that's what it looks like without it. As I start turning it on, you can see it really affects everything. And what it's doing is it's, it's affecting its position. Um, we're distorting the position values that are coming into this noise texture. All right, now we can use this to then create, uh, you know, even more emission, go like that. We're gonna make more. <laughs> All right, let's go to the vibrancy of this thing, and crank it up to five, way too much. Bring it down. And just play with these. So we can grab a mapping node. So we can end up with two different levels of motion now because we've got this like double we got this noise texture affecting our texture coordinate. So we can actually end up with some cool stuff. We're just gonna set a keyframe here for this value. I'm gonna to go to the graph editor, open up the material, go to the node tree, and I'm gonna find that value. Uh, which one is it? It's the X value for this. And if I drop out this little hidden menu, we go to modifiers and then go to uh, generator. And then we can just turn down this X value here to like 0.1 maybe, 0.01. Basically what that does, it's just gonna constantly add 0.01 to it. So it's gonna animate for us. The other thing is we could use um, use a sphere. That could, just, that could be a little bit better for us as a particle. So um, let's take our sphere and let's go into edit mode and scale them along the Z, elongate the sphere. And if we turn on dynamic and turn off randomize and then bake, we should, well, we won't know which way they're actually rotating. We need to change the rotation. No, that's pretty good. Looks like they're oriented along their plane of motion. Nope. All right. So we need to go into edit mode, select all. Let's try rotating on the X. Yeah. Now they're rotating. Now they're following the path. So you can see with that dynamic, you turn dynamic rotation on, they actually kind of follow the line. 
So I'm gonna kind of land this and turn this into an actual image. So, so I'm gonna come over here to uh, color for my world. I'm gonna drop it down to black. I'll go ahead and give us some stars. So I'll go to my world here and I'll grab a noise and I'll grab a color ramp and an emission. Stick that there, that's all working. Drop my scale way up, bring in the space. Uh, I'm gonna hide this this particle. I don't wanna have this. So I'm gonna create a new collection and I'll just drop this particle into it and just turn it off. All right, now let's figure out a nice color for this for this shader. I'm gonna switch back to my object shader. Uh, go for like a blue color here on my emission and I'm gonna add in another one here, probably right up at the top. All right, let's take our particle now. I need to turn that collection back on so I can get a hold of it. Select that. Now let's uh, let's do a similar kind of color here with these guys. So let's take um, a mix RGB. We're gonna throw this here. I'll make this white and switch to uh, multiply. Turn it all the way up. I'm multiplying all these numbers by one, which doesn't do anything. But if I take this number and turn it up to like two, maybe three, these are going to keep getting brighter and brighter. I can also take the factor up past one. Go ahead and start making that Dyson sphere shape. Let's go ahead and get a camera. Jump into our camera view inside the sun. Ah! Lock camera to view. Let's take our frame size and let's go 1080 times 2.35 to get that cinematic aspect ratio. And let's go to viewport display. Passepartout, turn that off. So to do a Dyson sphere, um, let's see, what we can have is uh, shift A, we're gonna go isosphere. And I wanna have, actually I'll go into just wireframe mode so we can see it here. We're gonna go for two subdivisions. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the modifiers and we're gonna set a, a wireframe modifier on this guy. We're gonna increase the thickness up, something like that. And then what we'll do is we'll create a material for it. And also I'll create, um, oh, I've got a sun already in my scene, that's good. Turn the value up. Now it's gonna be a weird scene to light because, you know, we've got a sun in it, but it's on the inside. So it's like, how do you actually light something like that? Um, we'll need to make this kind of not so obvious. Make another sun lamp, swing it around to the other side. Pop the strength up. Bring this one a bit more closer to white. Um, and we also need to change this because this guy is affecting, it's, it's, you know, it's glossy or whatever, which I don't want. So I might turn specular off. Technically we don't need to use uh, principal BSDF for the sun. It's a bit overkill, but. Um, all right, so now what we can do is uh, we can hit shift D with this isosphere. And now with this one, what I want to do is I'm going to come over here to my modifiers. I'm going to get rid of this wireframe modifier. And I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm just going to select like some of these faces. Um, I'll select all actually, and then I'll shift select some of these faces. Just kind of randomly going around here, delete faces. Now we've got some faces that are kind of covered and others that aren't. Now let's come over here and give them the same material. And we're going to do our good old double Veroni trick. So take the distance, plug it into the vector. This is to create panels for us. We get a texture coordinate, drop that here, pop the generated into the vector. And I'm going to take this, create a color ramp for uh, distance into this. And then I'll pop it into the emission so we can really see it clearly. And I'll switch this to Manhattan. Manhattan kind of gives you um, square panels, basically. And I'll just pipe this into the color and I'll get a bump, grab the bump into the height, turn my strength down, up, maybe invert it. Eh, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna have a separate one for my color. So I'll separate that out, bring that over here, base color. 
and I'll just drag that out. And now let's think about what this thing could look like. Um, I'm gonna go for like a dark, definitely wanna go for like a dark color. I'll make it really metallic and really specky. I might drop the roughness down a little bit, make sure I turn on screen space reflections. Let's let's get a better shot here. I'm gonna lock my camera to view. All right, now let's also go into our world now. And um, I wanna add in some volume to this world. So I'm gonna go for a noise texture, uh, a color ramp, like so. And pipe the factor into that. And I'm gonna go for a volume scatter node. Pipe that into that, take this up here, put this into here. And we should lose everything, there we go. And we'll take our density down to 0.01 and drop my anisotropy down really low like that. 0.001, maybe pull this up a bit. So what we can do is like we can go here, I can shift A, create a light, create a point light and bring it around to like here or something in our shot. We can make it the same general color as our sun and I can turn up the power to like a thousand, let's say, and then increase the radius. Um, it's kind of nice, it just gives us these little accents on the Dyson sphere. Maybe, maybe a bit too much though. And let's come over here to our sun lamp because we're getting a bit off of that. And if we make this more of like a pink or something. And let's take this other light that's over here, the red one. Go 50, 20. Just playing around with where we can position it. Oh, that's sick. Go with the binary star system. Maybe make it a bit more orange. All right, so now what we can do is let's um, let's go let's go to the compositor here to the image editor. I'm gonna switch to the viewer node. I'm gonna use nodes. I'm gonna go viewer node, and let's just set this up so we can see it really clearly. And now let's just see what some of these nodes can do for us. Let's grab the glare node and let's switch this to ghosts. And I'm gonna turn my threshold up, way up. You've got some bright things in this scene. There we go. We go up to 1000. You can see these nice like ghosting. It's like little lens flares basically. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot through this episode and had a lot of fun with it and gained some cool tricks that you can use for yourself. I will catch you in the next tutorial. See you later. Bye. Woo!